The Labour Party has won this general election. Dude, I I'm drinking this uh, liquid death. You know the bottle, uh, the can that Cody Co has on his desk like every single video because he obviously owns part of the company. It tastes like... Like, this has got like five, six grams of sugar in it, I think. But you'd think for that much sugar, it would taste okay. It tastes like It just tastes sugary, which doesn't make sense. Bizarre, bizarre rant over. Right, okay. Politics are something I definitely stay away from with a 50-foot pole. Because honestly, there is no winning with them. You say you're left-leaning, the right hate you. You say you're right-leaning, the left hate you. You stay somewhere in the middle, they call you a fence-sitter, and both sides absolutely hate you. And also, in an incredibly brave statement, I really don't feel educated enough to speak upon politics. I mean, you know, I I'm acting like most people that talk about politics actually know what they're talking about. They don't. But I will happily admit, I am nowhere near educated enough. And also, if I did say I was supporting a political side, I definitely would start some kind of civil war with everyone telling me that I fell off. Despite that, there is been a general election in the uk that happened a couple of days ago and oh my god oh oh boy like th this has been an interesting one so much so that, that i had to do a slot video on it now one of the reasons i don't talk about uk politics is because american politics they absolutely mug us the amount of ridiculous stuff that happens in american politics every single day that'll probably happen once every 20 years in uk politics and we would invite the president to come here and tell noted. us directly. <laughs> noted noted kelly um, but, He's awake. Um, that's inappropriate. As you heard from um, your colleague, the president of the WHA, that's inappropriate. Thank you, Kelly. And also as well, who can forget the debate between Trump and Joe Biden, where it was basically just two people in the old folks' home waving their walking sticks at each other. On um, the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look. We had the safest border in the history of our country. Now, obviously, I'm aware that the majority of you guys are from America. You're not from the UK, probably because, I mean, the only thing I can assume is because you think I've got a funny voice and you watch me for some kind of sympathy. But you might have heard that recently in the political conclusion in the UK, a party called Labour has got into power and they haven't been in power for around 14 years now. So what I'm going to try and do is educate the Americans how UK politics works. Oh, my God. You know what? This is going to make the time where uh, I... I mispronounced certain stuff in the Drake video. That, that's going to seem like absolutely nothing compared to how much I'm going to get slaughtered for this one. Now, unlike the American two-party system, we got red and blue. We basically have a multi-party system, which is, again, red and blue. And then there's some other parties that basically never get in. And this is a really good system in the UK because you can basically do a pity vote. Like me, for example, I always vote Green Party because they'll never get into power. It's a completely wasted vote, but I can at least vote for them and go, I'm doing something, I think. They were going to save emissions or, or tax the rich or they'd do something. But we'll never know because they'll never get into power. I, I'm not even doing a bit, by the way. I literally always vote green and they'll just never fucking get in. Now, OK, to be fair, this isn't entirely true. I'm sure you know the House of Commons, which is the, the funny shouty box. You probably see clips of uh, on YouTube. Basically, if a party doesn't win, they can still win seats in their constituency. And then they are represented as seats in the House of Commons. So basically, again, this still boils down to the majority party that's in power. that have the most amount of seats, the most amount of voices go yeah, yeah, yes, 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 I agree with that one, yes. I'm not doing cocaine in the House of Commons. What are you talking about? Ignore that news report there. So basically, the general election this year was to assign seats in Parliament. And obviously, whoever gets the most seats, their party uh, has a prime minister that runs the country. So essentially, during the election, 650 seats were up for grabs. Now, obviously, as a member of Parliament, you've got a lot of responsibilities, uh, lawmaking, uh, approving budgets, and also, most importantly, documenting any mistakes the other party makes so you're absolutely rent free about them. And whenever they bring up a genuine point against you, you bring up that thing they did 20 years ago. Now, on top of the House of Commons as well, you have the House of Lords. But again, the... This is a slop video. You, th you think I'm going to explain all that? You think, you think I'm going to explain all that? Go watch on Phil. It's just like a 50 minute video. He'll probably name every single person in the House of Lords. <laughs> I would like to say I'm not taking any shots at Umperville. I like him very much. He's a very talented uh, YouTuber. I've also got him to voice in the Darkwood video as well with his incredibly sexy voice. I slid inside my sleeping bag and zipped it shut. I preferred to suffocate my own stench than listen to that fuckhead go on and on and on about it. Now, that brings us to the election last week, which had an insane turnout. Not turnout as in people that went to vote, because apparently we've had one of the lowest amounts of people leaving their house to vote in like 20 years or so. No one cared. Now, first of all, we've got the Labour Party, which I guess 
to compare to Americans. Uh, it's probably the Democratic Party in, in the US. You know, they focus on social justices uh, until they don't, public health care until they don't, uh, workers' rights until they don't. And then you have the Conservative Party, or as they're most known online, the Tories. And it's funny because the word Tory was basically short for conservative. And that has basically now became some kind of like bizarre slur. Like if you're calling someone a Tory, you're basically saying, oh, you're rich, aren't you? I bet you got rich parents. I bet you got a hedge fund, haven't you? Now, they're probably more closer to the Republican Party. They're more open for kind of like, you know, privatization, free markets, lower taxes, and obviously a stronger national defense. And then you've got the Liberal Democrats. What, what can I say about, I don't know. I think, I think basically the Liberal Democrats are this like third party, right? They've always been third place and third place gets you nothing because first place you become, you know, prime minister and you got the most amount of seats. Second place, you become the opposition party and the leader of the opposition, which is basically prime minister that has no power, but you do like shouty shouty in the House of Commons. Mr. Robertson, Mr. Robertson, calm yourself, man. Third place, what do you do? You, you don't do anything. So Liberal Democrats have been doing this weird thing at the minute where they have like uh, their, their leader, I guess. And he's been doing like, you know, dancing around, uh, skydiving. I think they were on about legalizing uh, the, 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 the 420, but also not doing it, but not saying that they wouldn't because they kind of wanted people to vote for them. It's it's very bizarre. Now, they're obviously closer to being more like a uh, centrist uh, liberal in the US, and they like to focus on uh, electoral reform and also civil liberties. And then you have the SNP, the Scottish National Party, which was basically like strong arming Scotland. I mean, again, it has the word S in it for Scotland. Obviously, it was the strongest party in Scotland up until uh, their ex-leader Nicola Sturgeon was involved in this weird like misspending of like independent funds. I think it was around like six hundred thousand pound or something and that then basically led to like all hope in SNP being departed as quick as possible now the SNP were almost like state level democrats and they wanted to focus on like you know uh, regional autonomy I, I mean pretty much any chance Scotland gets with, with some kind of referendum they basically want to go independent and cut themselves away from us now the SNP again before the whole Nicola Sturgeon thing they had a lot of power in Scotland they didn't have much power in the rest of the UK because one thing you'll notice in the UK you travel 30 minutes everywhere everyone has a completely different accent because everyone despises each other. I mean, a good example is uh, Critical. The other day, he played a horror game that I played where you're on a oil rig and the majority of the people on there are Scottish. He had no idea what they were saying. Cars, me old mucker. I do. That was English? I tried not reading the subtitles right there and that actually sounded like me waking up groggy. That is such a thick accent. And then of course you have your boys, the Reform Party. Now the Reform Party, I'm not sure what side of TikTok I'm on at the minute, but whenever you see some kind of video of something happening in the UK, the top comments are always people saying vote reform, even though the election already happened and there isn't going to be one for another four years, people are still begging in the comments to vote reform, usually on some kind of like burner account. Now they were formed in 2018 as the Brexit Party and they were basically one of the, you know, biggest parties to advocate uh, the UK leaving the European Union. And I could get into an entirely different video on how Brexit has affected me. I mean, two examples, uh, one bad and one good, is, for example, when I go to Sweden a lot, because, you know, I am a bit of a swearboo, place, sad face, place, Sweden, happy face. But now when I queue up through immigration to get into Sweden, I have to queue up with everyone else that is outside of Europe. So usually the queue is like four to five times longer. But on a weird benefit as well, the fact that I'm technically not part of the EU anymore, I can actually buy stuff within Sweden and other European countries, and then I can actually claim that as tax back money. Now, I guess the closest they can be compared to is like the, the state libertarian party. You know, they're like small government, uh, deregulation, and obviously a lot more individual freedoms. And one of the last parties you have, of course, is the Green Party, which again, I vote for every single year as a kind of sympathy vote, because then I can't be called out. I mean, technically, what party would I benefit from the most? I would benefit from Conservative. I, I would. I've never voted for them. Oh, Brexit statement as someone in their 20s that hasn't voted Tory. Ooh. But they would benefit me the most because they had the lowest tax brackets because they prefer to protect people that are on higher income brackets. And surprise, surprise, someone that's been doing YouTube for seven years is on a higher tax bracket. Now, they obviously focus more on environmental issues, you know, sustainability, social justices. Now, with all those absolutely horrendous analogies, please don't link Hassan this video. I swear to God, I do not want to be torn apart by that guy. If you couldn't tell from the reaction to the Sky News hosts, Labour won a absolute landslide majority. Oh, Whoa. oh. oh my God. Oh. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> but obviously, that being said, I know everyone's like, well, Labour won, the, the UK saved. There's obviously a lot of factors in play here. But to grossly oversimplify things, basically, the Conservatives lost so many seats because so many people actually lost faith in them that Labour didn't actually gain that many more seats. I think they gained like 2% more seats overall. But because Conservatives lost so many seats, they are now basically the majority party. So it's not people supporting Labour. It's just their mistrust in the leading party right now. So the second best party came out on top. I mean, some of the biggest criticisms they faced is how they handled the economy. I think another thing as well is we had so many conservative leaders because obviously when someone that is a part of a party that's winning steps down, there isn't another election. People within that winning party basically just pick, oh, you could be prime minister, you could be prime minister. And what a lot of people do during an election, they vote for the party because of the prime minister. But obviously when they start changing who's the head, you lose trust in them very quickly because they're not really the person that you picked. I think we had David Cameron first uh, until he bailed uh, and then we had Theresa May until she bailed. Uh, th th then we had Boris Johnson uh, who basically like is just the average British man after twink death. And then we had Liz Truss after that and then obviously Rishi Sunak. Now all this being said, Labour winning was not a surprise to anyone. It was basically all but guaranteed. If anything, what's surprising after the election is how few people actually voted for Labour. They won, but again, like I said earlier, they only really won because so many people didn't vote for Conservative. They voted for other parties instead. I mean, a good example is Reform UK, a basically non-existent party until a few years ago. And now they have five seats in the House of Commons because they basically ate into the Conservative votes. Now, one of the greatest moments of the night was obviously Rishi Sunak basically doing a speech being like, oh, I got voted out and I'm no longer Prime Minister. Unlucky. And he does this, you know, very noble speech, holding his head high, saying, even though I wasn't voted in, I was picked to be Prime Minister. I still take it as my responsibility. And while all this is happening, you can see right behind him, Nico Omelano, who's like this, this great prank YouTuber. He's basically holding a giant L sign behind Rishi Sunak. The Labour Party has won this general election and I take responsibility for the loss. Now, Nico isn't a stranger to British politics. He basically ran for London mayor in 2021. And when I was browsing Netflix at three in the morning, they made like an entire documentary about it for some reason. I tell you, my managers down in London, they, they, they are different. They will get you involved in everything. Now, now, Nico's policies were pretty clever because obviously, you know, he's doing a bit, right? He's dressed up in a suit. He's got like these uh, like like pound saver sunglasses you buy from like, like a souvenir shop in like Ibiza or something. I am a serious politician. But at the same time, he was bringing in like genuine actual changes as well that weren't bits. Like for example, he basically wanted to outright ban stop and search because obviously stop and search is basically a thing in the UK where, you know, you stop people and search them if they got like knives or something. And this sounds really good. Like why would you want to ban that? But obviously the stats have shown that it's been like incredibly discriminatory. And then there's also like more semi-sarcastic ones. Like for example, he wants to reduce Freddo's to 5p. If you don't know Freddo's, it's, it's like this chocolate bar with caramel in it. Like it's great. It's really nice. It's probably one of the reasons I was so fat as a kid. Now, obviously him saying he's going to reduce Freddo's to 5p, that in of itself is pretty smart. He's basically criticizing uh, inflation, uh, the... I hate how I can't, I can't say that word. I can't say that word. I'm not allowed to say that word. He's criticizing inflation and more importantly, the cost of living crisis because despite the UK being like, I think we've got like, we're meant to be like the fourth richest country in the world. We're basically a third world country now. It's great. We've got so many billionaires living in the country, but I'm still waiting for the meal deal to go back down. And the funny thing is as well, when he was running for mayor in London, which was a different election a little while ago, that's basically just for someone in London. Uh, it's a mayor. And this gets even more confusing because the, the mayor of London is basically late even though he was under a conservative leadership. It, it does get very confusing. But Nico, if you look at these polls, he basically managed to get 50,000 votes, which is like, you know, basically just half of what the Liberal Democrats got. And it's obvious, like the guy was never going to get into power. He didn't have a single chance. I mean, the majority of fans are pr probably too young. But that's the point though. He wanted to cause uproar. He wanted to cause a stir. I mean, he was never going to get in anyway. Like, like the average Nico viewer, it's probably like one of my viewers, they'll probably be able to vote in about 20 years. But I'd also like to point out that Nico is not the first person to do this. So, okay, let's Let's say Nico is like a new gen disruptor, right? That's a TikTok word. I'm going to try and incorporate that in my vocabulary now. I'm 27, but I'm still trying to be, you know, I'm trying to be hip and cool. All right. So Nico is a new gen disruptor. 
let me introduce one of the old head disruptors, and that is Count Binface. This guy has basically been a massive troll trying to run for like London mayor for the best part of like 20 to 30 years. I'm convinced it's not even the same person anymore. It's just someone that's basically switching costumes and identity. Now, Count Binface is someone who has proposed a intergalactic space warrior, and his campaign, I, I, I'm not even going to bother explaining it. I, I'm just going to show you. So what are you waiting for, North Yorkshire? Join me. It's time to put Richmond and North Allerton on the star map. Make the 4th of July Independence Day. And obviously the memes don't end there because we have Count Binface, but I have not introduced Lord Buckethead. Now, Lord Buckethead ran all the way back in 2021 as part of the... This is real, by the way. This is actually their name. The official Monster Raving Looney Party. The official Monster Raving Looney Party... 230. Thank you. It's been an ongoing party for a while. Like they have committed to the bit and basically wasted half their lives doing it. This has been a thing since the 1960s. And again, much like what Nico's doing, they bring in like a bunch of like, like meme changes, but also like serious ones as well. But looking into it, like, like it is actually insane that politics in the UK are so cooked new gen word that there, there are so many political characters because again like everything must have an equal and opposite reaction so we've had like you know the conservative party labor and now we have uh mr fish finger mr fish finger 309 uh bobby elmo smith bobby elmo smith 19 and obviously the rest of the aforementioned monster raving loony party. So I want to go over some of these members we've got at the minute for the monster raving loony party because like, like they are such a meme. They basically have to get in power at some point. So the first one we have is Barmy Brunch. And he basically tried to dethrone Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, as the MP of Northeast Somerset. Now, Jacob Rees-Mogg, you know, I hate so much, bro. Like the, the fact that his surname is Mogg. It's it's completely unreadable in modern times. Look like like mog. Like he just goes around mogging people like. Jacob Rees Mogg was actually someone that got dethroned pretty recently during the election. He was actually kicked out because he lost his space. 78. Mogs it. Yeah, not only has he gone, I mean, he's been absolutely... He's been battered, yeah. and, and he deserves to be. Now, you can see him right here in this clip on the right. He's wearing a white shirt, a yellow rosette, but they're, like, specifically cropping out his face on purpose. And then taking to Twitter, the cesspit that it is, you'll quickly find out that this guy is hes just relatively harmless. He's just a baked bean balaclava boy. One thing I do love, though, is, like, when Jacob rees Mark, when he basically realizes his time's up, he's lost his seat, he then does this speech about, like, chitty, chitty, bang, bang. And final thought from Caractacus Pots, and that is, from the ashes of disaster, grow the roses of success. So thank you very much to everybody, and good night. And then he's shaking hands with a man covered uh, with a baked bean balaclava. Like, again, UK politics are just a joke. Now, this goes to show that the general election wasn't a political event. It was uh, it was a spectacle. Like, again, I, I, I get it, right? Like, all the headlines, it's, you know, completely dominated by uh, Orange Man and Sleepy Man. But I really think people need to pay attention more to British politics because some of it is just, it's just an absolute joke. Oh, yeah, and guess who's going to take office this year? Uh, 10 Downing Street, where you see all the prime ministers go into. They actually have a official cat that's like a, a chief mauser, which I assume is just like catching mice called... Larry the cat and I'm pretty sure no matter what part he gets in it'll just still be blazing around catching mice doing absolutely nothing pretty much like most people that are running as prime minister <laughs>